What's going down folks, it's your boy C23 back on the sticks once again with another NCAA 14 Dynasty video for you guys. And as you can see, we have a huge matchup in this one folks. We're traveling all the way down to Florida to take on the number three ranked team in the nation, the Florida State Seminoles. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna look at this matchup and go, Nevada has no reason even being on the same field as Florida State. But after the last couple of weeks knocking off Ohio State and LSU, maybe we might have another shot at delivering an upset special. We'll see. Let's get into the gameplay though. We're gonna need a big game from Richardson if we're gonna even have a chance in this one. So coming out for the first drive of the game, Stewart looking downfield, doesn't see anything open, so he scrambles out of the pocket for a huge gain. And he's still going, juking a couple of players in the process for a huge 29 yard pickup. That wasn't a bad play to start the game. Now we follow that up trying to go to the ground game with Lynch and it's just like it's been all season long to this point. We just don't have the guys up front to establish the run game against these bigger ranked schools. But that's okay though because so far we've been able to scheme around it and make it work for us. So on third and seven here, Stewart's in the shotgun making a quick adjustment, taking a snap, looking downfield, trying to make something happen and somehow overthrows his wide open running back. That makes no sense. I don't get that one right there, folks. The guy was wide open in the middle of the field. All he had to do was just put it on him. But after the incomplete pass, we end up kicking the ball back to Florida State and see if our defense can stop the third ranked team in the nation. They go with the ground game with Cook right there and we end up doing a good job on that play, stopping them in the backfield. And it's kind of crazy actually seeing Florida State on the opposite side of the field. Because if you guys go back to my last NCAA series, it was using these very same Florida State Seminoles. So it's a little bit weird playing against them. But at the same time though, it is kind of cool because I did spend a lot of time getting used to all these players and I'm pretty familiar with the type of damage that they can do. But getting back to the gameplay, as you can see there, the run play goes nowhere, and he just demolished my running back, Lynch. I'm surprised Lynch didn't cough the ball up there. That was a pretty vicious hit. Next play, we go play action, and my tight end drops the ball. I don't understand what's going on in this one. And to make matters worse, we get a holding penalty called on us on an incomplete pass. So it backs us up, and we're now looking at a second and 17 pretty much at a five yard line. So on second and 17, I attack the one-on-one -on -one coverage and it's incomplete. The pass is just casually broken up by Hoskins on the play. So a couple plays later on third and 10 for Florida State, they're taking a the snap in the shotgun. I'm thinking we could probably get off the field here, right? Rudolph says, think again, and brings in a huge gain on a 29 yard catch. That was pretty crazy how he was just wide open on the sidelines like that. And of course, it sets them up in the red zone. So they're just going to dink and dunk their way all the way down until this happens. What kind of defensive effort was that? The quarterback pretty much just runs in untouched for an easy score. So the lack of execution in this one is coming back to bite us pretty early, folks. We've got to come out here and try to get some things corrected and get some momentum flowing in our favor because this is not working. So we dump the ball off to Lynch and the defense is right there. He really only made a couple of steps before he was tackled. So on second and seven now, I go right back to the play that was working all game long against LSU. Gibson was such a reliable target in the last one, I figured why not come out here and try to get him involved. And sure enough, it's a huge pickup on the play. Bringing up a first and 10 now, going back to the ground game. And like it's been all day, we pretty much get nothing out of that. Lynch only gains three on the play. Looking at second and seven now, I try to dial up the same play to Gibson, but the pass is broken up. I guess we went back to the well a little too soon on that play. Now we're looking at a third and seven situation. I don't know how Stewart was able to complete that pass right there. He just threw a laser and Richardson was able to come down with it. Taking a look at second and 10 now, Stewart drops back, has a man deep, throws it up and is dropped by Sellis in the end zone. Are you kidding me right now? You have gotta be kidding me. I can't do anything right in this one. Stewart put the ball right on the money and Sellis has butter fingers. We're going against the third ranked team in the nation. You have to make that play. Oh my goodness. And I'll be honest with you guys. I was so mad at that play that I really just felt like turning the game off. And to be real with you guys, it really messed with my head the rest of the game. Plus, when you factor in those two fluke drops from earlier, well, the drop and then the overthrow, it really started to get to me like, yeah, this probably isn't our game. And the moment that I started thinking like that, this happens. I kid you not, folks, on cue. This was really one of those weird type of head games that you just knew you had no shot at winning. Regardless of adjustments or play calling, I really started to think that there was no opportunity for me to get this one. 
Now, on the bright side, there is plenty of time left. It's only a 7-0 game. I've been able to come back from way worse deficits before, so let's not pack it in just yet, especially if our defense keeps making plays in the backfield like that, setting up a second and 12, sacking the quarterback. Our defense is doing a pretty good job in this one, setting them up with a third and 16 now. So I'm thinking, okay, just when I start feeling good about things, look at what happens. They dial up the deep ball and gash me for 53 yards through the air. And just like that, any type of positive momentum, fairy dust, happy thoughts, whatever you want to call it, it all goes out the window. I mean, look at this. Dalvin Cook carried about four guys with him into the end zone right there. How crazy is that? Now, moving things into the second half, I was able to back him up to third and 15 and check out what happens. Wilson gashes me for another huge gain, and that's partially my fault because I ended up highlighting the wrong player. But anyway, it sets them up for this. Whitfield goes in for an easy score right there, and I feel like he's trying to taunt me on purpose, but I mean, that's cool. Your parents named you after a Muppet, but you don't gotta show me up like that, bro. Nah, I'm just clowning. But as you guys can see, the onslaught just continues. This thing gets ugly, and we just get blown out in this one. It just wasn't meant to be. I did manage to put a drive together and score a touchdown at the very end of the game, but it really didn't matter. We just got our keysters handed to us. We ended up losing this one 38 to nine, and really, we just need to refocus and play better, and hopefully we can come out and get a W in the next game. But anyways, folks, that's my time. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm signing off, and I'll see you in the next one.